If you're looking at buying a boat, there are some things that you need to look for when you go to look at a boat. Let's have a look at what those things are that you need to look for. Hello, it's Joe here for Joyrider TV. Today we're just gonna have a look at key things to look for when buying a second-hand used Hobie 16 or Hobie 14 or something similar. The first thing to consider is what are you gonna be using the boat for? And how often are you gonna use it? What's your budget? If you want to be buying a boat so that you can go out and race, then the boat is going to need to be of a higher specification than if you were gonna buy a boat and just use it occasionally to go out sailing on a lake with light winds, perhaps taking people for rides, maybe going fishing, something like that. So firstly, we're gonna take a look at the hulls. If we go from front to back with the hulls, starting at the bow tang area, we're looking for any cracking around here. A few small cracks like this are okay. That's generally cosmetic. Quite a significant thing to check for on the deck and on the sides of the hulls is if it's soft at all. So give it a push with your hand. And if that goes in at all, that can mean that there are problems deep inside. So that can lead to some significant expense to repair. So any softness on the hull is a warning sign that something bad is going on in there. As well as checking for softness on the deck, we want to check for softness on the side of the hulls as well by giving that a push. So we can see that this boat is absolutely rock solid. It's quite, it's quite a recent one. Um, a little bit of movement is all right there, but if it makes a lot of movement and a crunching sound, then that's gonna be very expensive to repair. So steer clear of that one. Also with the hulls, just have a feel of the gunnel and this should be fairly stiff, very stiff. If it moves a lot, that might mean that the joint between the deck and the side of the boat has split. Again, that can lead to some considerable expense. If you're a boat builder and you can repair that sort of thing, then that's fine. But if you're not and you have to pay someone else to do it, we could be racking up some hidden costs if we don't check these pieces. Where the pylons, this is a pylon, where this enters the hull, it's important that this is in good condition where this goes in. If it feels like there's movement here, it will be difficult to tell when the boat's built, but you, you'll get an idea. Then this is gonna need pretty much complete reconstruction of the whole hull. So if there's movement between the pylon and the hull, even if you're just using your boat for going fishing, this is a major avoid factor. And then finally with the hulls, just check for any cracking um, or movement with the gudgeon here. Uh, any movement there, that could lead to complications down the line. Um, it's not as uh, severe as the pylons, but still it is not ideal. While you're back here, you can also check the serial number to make sure that the age of the boat is the age that the seller is telling you it is, just by checking the last two numbers on the serial number, and that will be the year that the boat was built. Next, it's worth checking the rigging and the fixtures. Um, what we're looking for with the rigging is that it's not going rusty around the joints. This, of course, can be replaced but it's ideal, of course, if the rigging is in good shape. And you can check up the bridle wires for split wires as well and up the shrouds and everything. So actually having made this video, I found that one of our boats has got quite a significant problem. And this is one to check underneath where the mast sits under the front beam. We can see we've got a crack there. This is going to need to be repaired by a specialist aluminium repair guy so if there's a crack there 
we can't continue sailing with this boat with a crack there so that needs to be repaired so check that that could cause issues so it is possible to fix the cracking under the front beam the difficulty here is actually finding somebody who can weld aluminium but um it's not particularly expensive but it does involve taking the dolphin striker off which is quite an operation so if you can find a boat which doesn't have cracking under the mast step on the front beam that will be easier but it's not the end of the world if you have got it because you can get it fixed of course have a look at the mast check that the mast is straight if the mast's up you can just put your eye up the mast like this and you'll be able to get a fairly good idea if it's straight just compare it to the main halyard up there if the mast down you could do something similar and there you go take a look at the rudder blades um, there are of course different grades of rudder blade the highest of course is the EPO 3 these are going to be excellent if the boat's got EPO 3s on it and the cost of the boat is a price that you can afford then just go for it if it's got EPO 3s on it the boat's either going to be very well looked after or fairly new so that's a good sign that it's going to be a nice boat the next grade of rudder blades is what uh, Hobie called the White Knight rudder blade, which is still a very good rudder blade. Uh, it's not quite as high end as the EPO 3, it's a little bit less expensive. Uh, with the White Knight rudder blades, it is worth checking the leading edge. Let's go under and have a look. Check this edge here for cracking. If there's cracking in that edge, it means there is a chance that the rudder blade will snap so that's going to cost a little bit to get it repaired um, before you start using the boat the next the lower grade of rudder blade is what Hobie called Lexan and this if you give it a knock it's got kind of like a metallic sound to it these rudder blades are very heavy and they do bend quite a lot so if you are intending on using the boat in a high wind to do some speed sailing especially or racing these rudder blades i would say are not going to be good enough however if you're just going to use the boat to go fishing to go out sailing with the family when there's light wind then these will be fine it's a good idea to check the general condition of the trampoline here on this boat, we've actually got two very different conditions of trampoline. We can see that this side is going quite grey. There's been some damage. Um, so if the trampoline is a mesh one and it's going grey like this, it's not going to last much longer. So it will probably need replacing, even if you're going fishing. Um, the other half of the trampoline, we can see it's much blacker. So this is in really good shape although it's got a few small repairs on it, this quality of trampoline is gonna do you much better. So the trampoline may need replacing, so factor that in to the cost of the boat. Have a look at the eyelets in the trampoline as well. And if the eyelets aren't looking particularly healthy or where there's a bit of pull, they're pulling away, that might need repairing as well, so that'd be another cost to factor in. The same thing, of course, goes for the sails. If the sails are in good shape, then you're really on to a winner. Of course, you can pick up used sails of all different conditions, uh, depending on what you want to do with them. So, like I've said before, you can get X competition sails from your local Hobie Cat dealer, or they can get them in from the more regional distributor. Um, and those X competition sails are really inexpensive way of getting an almost brand new suit of sails so that's well worth considering um, so do check the quality of the sails if the cloth is really old then there may be a chance that they can't even be repaired because there's nothing really to stitch to so uh, do have a good look at the sails and the condition there 
And then finally, there's different grades of blocks available on the main sheet. This is, for the 16, this is the best that you can get. The Harken with the switchable ratchet. You'll know it because it looks like that. That is a very good main sheet block. Also a fine choice is the more modern Harken with the pressure ratchet on there. That means the ratchet engages just when the block the sheet is under a certain amount of load. These are also very nice, which will mean uh, that's a good block. At the lower end of the scale, these are sail speed blocks. These are a much less expensive block, much lower grade. Um, so if the boat's got these blocks, then they're not quite as good. They're still gonna do you absolutely fine when you go sailing. But if you're going to be using the boat a lot and you're certainly looking at sailing in high winds or racing, then the Harkens are definitely a better block. With the top block, uh, what we find is it doesn't really matter. As long as the block is the right size and it's got ball bearings in, then uh, this is fine. It's the bottom block which is of interest there. And then finally, uh, it's worth having a look at the general condition of all the ropes on the boat. Of course, that can be replaced very easily, but everything adds up. So if you think, all right, we're going to need to replace the trampoline, the jib sheets and the bottom block of the main sheet, just take into account how much that's going to add up to. And if you've got a choice of a number of different boats, then perhaps you can factor that in. Other things to consider in the deal is does the boat come with a launching trolley? The launching trolleys for the boats, especially the ones with the big wheels, uh, they're pretty expensive. So if you're getting a decent launching trolley thrown in, uh, that launching trolley could be actually worth about four or 500 euros. So if that's being thrown in with the deal, great. Is there a trailer? Is there a cover? Things like that. So all worth considering in whether it's a good deal. Yeah, so those are the key things that I'd look at if I was going to be buying a secondhand 16 or 14 or something similar. If you are looking at a boat and you're really not sure if you should go for it or not, then by all means, send me an email. You'll find the email address in the description below. Uh, send some pictures and I'll get back to you as soon as possible to let you know uh, what I think of the boat that you're looking for. Um, yeah, so that's about the size of it there. So thanks for watching. I hope this has been useful and that helps you with your decision-making process if you are looking at buying a boat. Thank you very much. There'll be more coming up very soon.